uh, I never forget what he told me, but boss, I cannot score goals. And uh, I said to him, don't care, just try. I do remember saying to him when he scored his first goal, you know, I'll be able to tell my kids I played with you, and I meant every word of it. It was embarrassing for the defenders. He just scored when he wanted. He destroyed so many defences with, with his pace. Top draw. For three years in England, Thierry Henry reigned supreme. The head of spell was just unstoppable. One of the most gifted players of his generation, coveted by the world's biggest clubs. He was charismatic, educated, elegant, just as he was on the pitch. He would break records and win it all. A footballing monster in respects of ability. He's got everything. That's what you need, guys. You can just, just turn nothing into something. In 2004, Arsenal made history when they completed a Premier League season unbeaten. Central to their invincibility was Thierry Henry, widely recognised then as one of the world's greatest players. We knew, even when we were 1-0 down, Thierry Henry had not scored yet, but that will happen at some stage. I'm a competitor. There's no doubt in my mind that he's one of the, the best players that I've ever played football. Um, he was that he was that good when I go on the field. I will whatever it takes to win a game That's how it will be you think Thierry you think of that Arsenal the old conquering uh, The swashbuckling romantic Arsenal and is completely inseparable from that My dad said when he When he took me at the hospital he, he took me in his arm and he didn't even say if I was ugly or, or pretty or if I looked like him or, or my mom, he just said that that kid's going to be, he said to everybody, to the whole family, look at him, he's going to be great, a great football player. That's what he said. The first time he took it, he took me in his arm. That's what he said. Thierry Henry grew up in Les Ulis, a Parisian suburb where he honed his skills amidst the concrete landscape. For me, that was the best place in the world growing up. Uh, rough and tough. Uh, but thankfully for me, you know, my, my parents pushed me into the right direction. Even as a young player, the attributes required for a stellar career were already in place. What was obvious is that he had this incredible acceleration, capacity to go past players at, at pace. It, is, it was this finishing um, which really made him stand apart. His talent attracted the top French clubs, but Henri gained a place at the elite French football academy. Clairefontaine. We were like 60 in that school, and you know, through the 60s, maybe one guy is going to make it. So you got you to make sure you gotta, he has to be you. Two years later, Thierry Henry had graduated to the French first division. And it was at Monaco where he began what would become the defining relationship of his career. Monaco's manager was Arsène Wenger. He was a bit uh, technically average at the start because he missed many chances. When he was a young boy, of course, he was so much quicker than everybody else. But uh, I thought just he had something special. I made him start at the age of 18. He looked rusty, a bit off the pace of the game at the time. But uh, I thought this guy would make a career. The phone call I always remember, I was eating at the, at the stadium with the youth team. That's where we used to sleep. And the coach of the reserve team said to me, tomorrow you're going to train with the professional team. And I was like, what type of joke is that? And then he said, yeah, tomorrow you got to be at uh, 10 o'clock with the professional team. Then I said, OK. Then I went. Then at the end of the week, I played. And then the rest is history. But um, that's, how, that's how it was. When they call you, you got you to gotta be ready. So. Henri established himself as a winger at Monaco. In 1996, he was named the French Young Player of the Year. The following season, Monaco won the league title. And the next, they reached the UEFA Champions League semi-finals, with Henri scoring seven goals. He was a superstar. 
already. He was the great hope of French football already. Uh, he was a constant presence in the uh, uh, in the youth teams, you know, under 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And people were expecting great things of him. And he, he found it a bit difficult to, to live with that at times. But then, completely exploded, as we say in French, they exploded in European football on, on the biggest stage of them all and, and scored more goals, I believe, for Monaco than anybody had in the European competition. International recognition had been quick. French coach Emma Jacquet selected him for the French team that won the 1996 European Under-18 Championship. Two years later, he was a surprise selection for the French World Cup squad. Despite his youth, Henri remained unfazed. It was only at the very last minute that Jacquet decided to the gamble of uh, bringing in young players. You had Trezeguet, who was lethal in front of goal. You had Nicolas Sanelka, whom people thought at the time was perhaps an even bigger natural talent than either Trezeguet or Henri. And you had Henri, you couldn't have possibly all three in the group. Ultimately, Nicolas Anelka missed out. Henri immediately justified his selection, scoring three goals in the group stage. And the quarter-final against Italy illustrated his strength of character. Goalless after extra time, Henri and young teammate David Trezeguet did to take penalties in the shootout. The surprising thing is that they could possibly convince Emma Jacquet that they were the right people to do so. Can you imagine that? At 20 years old, you tell the manager, I think I'll take it. That's all right, there's only a place in the semi-finals of the World Cup at stakes, nothing really. Henri completed the tournament as France's top scorer with three goals. At just 20, he was a World Cup winner. The ultimate prize in football brought a maturity and a realization there was still much room for improvement and development in his game. I remember when I was young, you know, I used to be a bit crazy, grabbing the ball and running everywhere, and you know, uh, you know, I was like uh, not concentrate. Not, I mean, not in a bad way, but you know, that's that's the craziness of, of when you're young. You grab the ball, you just want to run at people, and you go everywhere, and and then you look at the time, and you're like 20 minutes. Wow, 70 more minutes to go. I'm dead. Sometimes I still do it, but you know, you're trying to be more efficient on the ball, and that's the most important thing. And you see the game in another way. You're more clever, your movement, uh, protect the ball better. Uh, it, it's totally different. At Euro 2000, he led a feared forward line as the emblem of French world football supremacy. He's a better player, full stop. Um, he's rediscovered himself and he's, he's become, we now know he's, he's going to be a fixture of the, of the French, he's the future of the French team already, he's the present and the future of the French national team. Three man of the match performances and three more goals, including the equaliser against Portugal in the semi-final, illustrated Henri's rising stature as France became champions of Europe. Henri continued to thrive on the international stage. He was the lone striker in 2006 as France reached another World Cup final, beaten by Italy in a penalty shootout. Yet he continued to score, passing Michel Platini as France's leading scorer of all time, before bowing out of international football with 51 goals. You will still hear in France people saying, well, he didn't quite deliver for France, but he delivered for Arsenal. You look at it and think, well, he only became a world European champion and played another World Cup final for France. Apart from that, it was a real failure. Six months after the 1998 World Cup final, Henri left Monaco for Juventus. But Serie A presented a whole new set of challenges. It was a very, very strong Juve side. You've got to think, you know, this is the side in which you had Zinedine Zidane, you had uh, Deschamps, you had Alessandro Del Piero. Uh, that was some side to break in if you were an attacking player. And um, so therefore he, find, he found himself uh, on the sidelines, literally. And uh, which is why another move was a good thing. Not that he necessarily wanted to move as quickly as that. Henri became disillusioned with his failure to secure a first team position. And when a familiar face offered an escape route, he grabbed it. I went to watch him in a, in a playoff game against Udinese for qualifiers for the UEFA Cup, and he played left uh, left wing back, yes. And uh, after the game, 
I uh, came back uh, to Paris with him and I told him, look, I will take you and you will play for striker. I actually told him I wanted to come. I actually told Arsene that I want to come and play with him again. And uh, I, that was something, that I, I don't know why, uh, maybe because Nicolas Anelka, Emmanuel Petit, Patrick Vieira and some of the French guys were playing there and they were only telling me some good stuff about the club. And uh, um, I, I always something that, there was always something with Arsenal, you know, the jersey, the stadium, when I was seeing it on TV, I always said to myself, I'm going to play there one day. And I told him, uh, look, I will give you a chance as a central striker. Uh, I never forget that he told me, but boss, I cannot score goals. And uh, I said to him, don't care, just try. At nearly 40 million euros, it was a gamble Wenger considered worth taking. I tested him when he came in. I was quite physical with him, as I was with, with all the strikers, because Arsene Wenger was bringing in trialists left, right and centre. I, I think he was trying to test us and see if we, were, we still had it. And he stood up to the challenge and he came back fighting. Character-wise, he was a winner. You could tell that straight away. But he had everything. He had, you know, on the, on, on the ball as well. He had skill, trickery, he could go past the player. And he had an eye for goal. I remember sitting in the gym, watching uh, Ian Wright playing in a testimonial game and looking at his movement. And Henri was stunning, stunned by his movement, the way that he used to pull off the last defender. And very quickly, he was, he was copying that in training. Thierry was very, very good to uh, spot your position, your body position. So if he saw you was out of position once he was attacking you, he, he could exploit it to the max. Henri adapted slowly to his new role as a central striker. The early part of the season saw frequent appearances as a late substitute. And on one such occasion, he scored his first goal in English football at Southampton. I do remember saying to him when he scored his first goal, you know, I'll be able to tell my kids I played with you, and I meant every word of it. Turned quickly, right foot, top corner, and after that, it was, it was amazing. Every single season, every game, two goals, three goals, one goal. It, 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 was, it was brilliant to play with Thierry. When you're playing with players that good, it's instant, you can see it. You knew that next season he's going to get better straight away, and uh, that's what happened. 26 goals in his first season was a phenomenal achievement, as Arsenal finished second in the league behind Manchester United. Wenger had moved Henri from the periphery to the heart of his side, and the striker had responded. He was very much a team player. You know, he was very much very in the dressing room. Um, you know, he had, he had his he had to have his say. He wanted the group. Without the group, he recognised early we don't win anything. If Henri was a standout performer, the true star was the team. Vieira coming in almost off the street at the beginning. Um, you know, a great lad to work with, had to have the ball. If you didn't give him, give him the ball, you got a rollicking, so everything went through through him, and then he'd give it to Dennis, and, and Dennis would then give it to Henri, and the ball was in the back of the net. It really was that kind of simple, and the rest of us were the sort of framework in and around that, supplying these guys, giving the ball to our best players, and boy, did we have some players. We had a fantastic kind of team uh, uh, going forward, and, and that's what it's all about. You, you, you need that kind of strength and depth, and, and, and uh, uh, Henri Thierry was definitely, you know, there at the top, making things happen. In his second season, Henri topped the league charts with 32 goals, as Arsenal won the double, defeating Liverpool in the top and Chelsea in the FA Cup final. He was the focal point of England's dominant force. Thierry is a quality, is super intelligent and he analyzes very quickly what is needed. He started to analyze all the movements of the goalkeepers and uh, therefore he became very efficient. He could explain to you, I never seen a guy like that, he could explain to you that he took the shot at that fraction of second because the keeper was on his left foot, but the, the defender was on the wrong side of, of, of him. Uh, he, he had a perfect picture every time of a moment when uh, he took the goal. In his third season, there were 32 more goals and a remarkable 23 assists. His link-up play with Dennis Bergkamp highlighted the skill, vision and intelligence of both these outstanding players. It goes without saying that you play with your head first. I mean, that's, that's, that's why a great player is always ahead of a normal player guy like uh, Dennis Burke, guys like that already know 
they already know what's happening. You know, so they're, they're three, four, five moves ahead of you. So that's why, you know, their brain is not normal. I trained with these guys uh, in training and I knew how good they were. And there was a stage when I was giggling sometimes when they pick up the ball. When it looks like he's going away from you in a game, something happens and you, you make something great out of, out of nothing, if you like. Dennis and Thierry can both, both do that. They give you hope and belief. You've got to have these match winners. They put fear into the other team and they, they energise their own players. That's what you need, players who can just, just turn nothing into something. If the Premier League developed Henri's reputation, one Champions League performance against Inter Milan truly caught the eye of the world. The, the game against Inter, which, which I remember as the game against Zanetti, which is probably very unfair to a, you know, a superb defender, but what he did, running the whole length of the pitch, taking over 10 touches of the ball, and to finish as he did as well, absolutely perfect signature trademark, Thierry Henry finish. You know, no, no defender could stop that, not the best defenders in the world. He was relentless the way that he was that night. And it did, it sent out ripples throughout Europe as to how good a player you know, he was and how Arsenal were. The Frenchman was at the peak of his powers, a master of his craft, as Wenger's Arsenal combined power with flair. He's the symbol of these years of, you know, of triumph, uh, not just in terms of trophies won, but also in terms of the quality of the football played in the way that the club entirely reinvented itself. You know, you think Thierry, you think of that Arsenal, the all-conquering, uh, the swashbuckling, romantic Arsenal, and he's completely inseparable from that. 2004 was the pinnacle. Arsenal remained invincible throughout an entire league campaign. Henri was named PFA Player of the Year for a second successive year. He, he was the top dog. He had to be the top goal scorer. He had to be the one that won something, and he was a winner. You have to have that quality, that winning quality, uh, and you have to love it. And he did. He, he, he loved it every day. He was up for it every week. And there's no doubt in my mind that he's one of the, the best players that I've ever played football. Um, he, was that, he was that good. He knew that he was a special player. He was getting a lot of accolades of everybody. And he loved all that. He loved the, um, you know, all, the, all the press saying, hey, Henri's this, Henri. Because he, 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 he thrived off that. He made him better. We knew, even when we were 1-0 down, Thierry Henry had not scored yet, but that will happen at some stage. So it is a, like a, a boost of the confidence of the team. Because one, at some stage we were even 2-0 down. Everybody looked at him, but uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you know, <laughs> we expect you to do something now about it, and that's what happened most of the time. I'm a competitor, and whatever, whatever you know, I, when I go on the field, I will, whatever it takes to win a game, that's how it will be. You know, I'm, I'm a competitor. I'm a pain in the neck, you know, like for my opponents and for my teammates. You know, I shout, I scream, I can't act. You know, when I'm on the field, you you see it straight away. You know, I'm happy or not. Yeah, I already said it, but that's that's the way it is. Ari continued to captivate. He won the European Golden Boot for the second successive season and was named Arsenal captain when Patrick Vieira departed for Italy. He could lead by example. He was assured of a place in the starting lineup. Was he a great talker, but he understood the game perhaps better than any of his teammates. He was a great thinker of the game. And a record breaker too. Ian Wright's club record 185 goals was passed, along with Cliff Bastin's league record of 150. You know, I don't really like coming in second to anybody, but if you could choose somebody, then it would be someone like Thierry. He, he, he is an unbelievable footballer, and I think Arsenal, again, very, very fortunate to get a player of his calibre come to us. I don't think there is a single footballer who's placed as much importance on facts and figures as Thierry Henry has done. Uh, it's, he has to have objective proof that he has succeeded. He will remember absolutely everything, every single aspect of every game, every goal he scored and how he scored it and will be able to dissect it. And it's all part of the, the Thierry Henry method of uh, becoming an even better Thierry Henry. In 2006, Henry ended the season as the league's top scorer for a third successive year, his fourth in total, and earned his third Football Writers Player of the Year award. 
The most prodigious thing about Tierra is the consistency. From the moment he started hitting this vein of form with Arsenal, let's say 2000 to 2006, is something that marks him really as one of, of the greats. By now, Arsenal were a youthful squad in transition. As the focal point, Henri could not provide all the answers. Arsenal fell short in the league, and there was heartbreak in Paris in 2006, when Henri's team were beaten by Barcelona in the Champions League final. From the moment that the Invincibles team started to be taken apart slowly but surely, there was a tendency afterwards to see Thierry as too much as a saviour. He's the the line running through the Arsenal chronology is, and is still as good as, as ever, almost, or almost, certainly until 2006. So the solution is there, and you use it, and you abuse it at times. The club's lack of investments unsettled Henri, and following an injury-blighted season, he signed for Barcelona in 2007. In Catalonia, he was simply another great player, world-class team. We brought him here to add even more quality to the squad. This team would only take players either from the academy or, if they came from outside, they had to be exceptional. Otherwise, they couldn't play here. When you wear that jersey, it's a lot of responsibility. You know, you play for, for Catalonia, you play, you play not only for, for Barcelona. It's like, it took me a little while to get it, but I did get it. And uh, when we all like well on tune and playing well we were virtually unstoppable he was someone who should have come to barcelona sooner than he did that's something i have to say it would have been much better had he come in earlier like the club says mescon club uh, it's more than a club initially Ari was deployed as a wide striker and struggled to adapt yet he completed his first season as barcelona's top scorer having developed a formidable relationship with fellow strikers Lionel Messi and Samuel Eto'o. He added quality to the team. He offered more options, and that would threaten opponents. And it's true that if they were too focused on Eto'o or Leo, Henri had chances. So that created great difficulties for the opposition. His second season in Catalonia saw him at his very best. Henri, Eto'o and Messi shared 100 goals between them. The highlight of the domestic season was the 6-2 defeat of Real Madrid at the Bernabeu Stadium. Even better was to follow. Barcelona won the treble of Copa del Rey League and Champions League, followed by victories in the Spanish Super Cup, UEFA Super Cup and FIFA Club World Cup. How do you follow that? Henri decided to move to Major League Soccer in the United States. The, the decision to go to New York was always in the back of my mind. Uh, for the World Cup, I would have gone to New York the year before. Uh, the year that we won everything with Barcelona, I would have left then. I always said the day I'm going to leave Europe, obviously Barcelona, because I, I didn't see myself going anywhere after Barcelona. Um, I was going to come and play for, for New York, and, uh, and that's what I did. You look at it and think, well, perhaps he could have carried on in a, in a different league, or he could have gone to Ligue 1, or back to Ligue 1, or to another leading uh, French or German or Italian or Spanish or English club. But no, it was part of the career plan. And again, he set objectives and he's reached every single one of them. After a career at the very top, in 2012, Henri reacquainted himself with the fans who had idolized him for so many years, taking a short-term loan back at Arsenal. And on his second debut, he scored the game's only goal, a fairy tale. The comeback was perfect. He, he was he was astounding. I think he astonished us all. Um, the goal against Leeds was beyond everything else. Uh, I've never heard a roar like this one at the Emirates or Highbury. And in fact, I've never heard a roar like that in any other stadium. Thierry Henry was one of the great strikers of modern football, multiple trophy winner, who for a time was arguably the best in the world. A French football genius who did the game and his family name proud. My dad is an happy guy, but very unhappy. 
it's kind of weird, you know, he always wants more, he always wanted more, and he is happy, but he always used to say to me, that's not enough, you know. You know, you got to do more, you got to do more, but I would like to think he's happy right now, hopefully. Well, I, I mean, I tried my best. <laughs>